My presentation is called um, Bob and Cam Kermelan. Um, have we got any Welsh speakers, Welsh learners in the audience? Oh dear, okay. <laughs> well, you can correct my pronunciation later on then, I think. Um, so it's a Welsh proverb. It means, with each step, go forward. Um, what I'm going to do in this presentation is I'm, I'm going to kind of tell the story through Welsh proverbs, really, of how we collaborated across Wales, fo focusing specifically on the library um, shared library management system initiative. Um, and hopefully what I can do really through that is show how um, it's really a kind of case study in terms of how you can drive major change through quite small incremental steps with each step go forward. So I'll start off with our premise, first of all, really. This is where we kind of started. So Wealth is the uh, Welsh Higher Education Libraries Forum. Um, Wealth started off by asking a question, really. Um, is there a business case for a shared library management system across higher education institutions in Wales? What would that look like if, if we were to develop such a system? What benefits would we achieve through that? So in terms of Wales, we're talking about nine higher education institutions, plus the National Library of Wales, and also the Welsh NHS libraries, who already had a shared system which was managed on their behalf through Cardiff University. So came into the consortium through that route, really. Um, so in order to answer that initial question, there was some work done. An initial feasibility study was funded through MALD, which is the Welsh um, Government Museums, Archives and Libraries Division. That reported in 2011. And at that point, it was decided that actually we needed to do some more work to really build the evidence for the business case. So we were lucky to, to achieve some funding through JISC for a six-month project to develop a full business case, really looking at this question in detail. Following that stage, the business case was presented to the Wealth Steering Group and agreed that it was sufficiently robust. And we then agreed jointly that we would fund a program manager to take that proposal forward and move forward to develop a shared library management system across all of those institutions and organisations. So, outcome, where we are now in terms of 2017, we have that single library management system is up and running with a discovery, single discovery interface using Ex Libris, Alma and Primo. That's been implemented for all of the HEIs in Wales with the last set of institutions going live in September 2016 plus the National Library and the Welsh NHS Library. So we've achieved that aim of bringing everybody on board to that single shared system. So how did we do it then? Um, so if you want to be a leader, be a bridge. So this, that's the seven bridge there. Um, and this is really about how, I guess, a key element for the project and a key, um, I guess, initiating factor of the project really was around bringing people and ideas together into that kind of shared space where we, we have that buy-in, where we're talking from, from along the same lines, having the same conversation, and there's that deep agreement to kind of move forward jointly, that deep understanding of what we're trying to achieve. So um, I guess a couple of things kind of underpinned this really in terms of, of kind of helpful factors and driving factors. I think... <coughs> One was really around the importance of aligning that strategy and, and action, and we had some key drivers there around Welsh Government initiatives, the, library, the Welsh Government's Libraries Inspire programme, talked very strongly about the need for shared services across library services in Wales. So there were some key links that we could kind of hook ourselves onto there, key bigger strategy drivers that we could kind of harness and use to the benefit of our initiative. The other aspect of this around being a leader and a bridge was around build, developing and really building on that what was already quite a strong culture of trust and cooperation and sharing across Wales. So there were a number of cooperative arrangements already in place, which had operated for a number of years quite successfully. Very strong kind of culture there of sharing and collaboration, um, which we were able to, again, kind of harness and use to our advantage, really. And then I think also the other key aspect was really building a, a kind of really strong ethos of team leadership as well. So it was about everybody in this team playing a part. We had specialists who brought their specialist knowledge to the team. Um, and we built that kind of that <coughs> shared understanding, that shared knowledge very much through very intensive joint activity, really, to kick the project off. So it's easy to be brave behind a castle wall. 
So that's, that's Harlech Castle. So what does this mean then, really? I think one of the things that we had to do right at the outset of, of this initiative, really, was, was to get those fears out on the table, kind of share them and own them, um, and then we could agree how to address them. So we had no kind of, hopefully no, no kind of elephants in the room, really. So at a very early stage in the initiative, we focused on getting those risks and anxieties out on the table. We did an exercise around looking at potential barriers and risks to the project. We tried to be as open and honest as we could as part of that process, and to then to kind of really share those risks. So the kind of things we identified then were things like the political risk, that we might have IT directors, for example, who might not want to give up local control over systems. Um, so there might be political drivers there which would potentially derail us. There might be economic issues in this, that it might not be possible to build a successful business case for a system, or maybe the business case would be undermined if the costs then for that system are potentially quite a lot higher than the current expenditure that each of those individual institutions were already committed to. Social kind of risks and anxieties here were around our staff, and staff might be resistant to change, perhaps where staff were very happy with an existing system, there was a lot of buy-in, to existing ways of doing things, it might, staff might not see the benefits and might be resistant to coming with us, really. Technological challenge, then, was around the state of the next generation library management system market at the time. Was it mature enough to enable us to achieve our aims? Um, might we go out to market and find actually there were no products out there which really fit our needs, really? And then kind of legal issues, we might be in a situation where we might not be able to break some current contracts, perhaps, to all enable us to move to a, a shared system at the same time. And finally, I think this one was probably quite important, particularly in the context in Wales at the time, around potential for HE merger. Um, and a number of institutions did indeed merge at the start of this process. So possibly the institutional focus might just be somewhere else. We may not be able to get buy-in so to look at library management systems because actually the institution is just totally focused on that, that effort that is created around institutional merger and, um, and how to take that forward really. So moving on then, starting the work is two thirds of it and I think what this reflects really is a kind of, just the kind of sheer difficulty in getting started really. The, 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 um, the um, mountain of work really which needed to be achieved to, a, to agree a joint specification across all of those quite different organisations in many ways um, and just the sheer effort in pulling that together to get to something where we could all buy into it, our procurement teams could buy into it, our IT teams could also buy into it um, and um, really that that was something that was going to be robust to take us through a tendering process. So the specification had massive potential really to derail the project. If we couldn't agree on what was needed, then we were never going to get anywhere really. Um, so the strategy that we, we kind of took to, to approach this really was that we identified functional leads for different areas of functionality for the LMS and they took the responsibility of building or leading on that aspect of the specification um, and then achieving buy-in both at, within their own institutions but also across the consortium. So they very much took the lead for each aspect of that specification. <coughs> that enabled us to share the work out but also developed some quite um, strong buy-in really for those leads who'd been obviously leading that, that um, process and working with other colleagues both within their institution and across the consortium felt a very strong commitment to those aspects of the specification. We had a number of very intensive meetings to develop the specifications. Um, the team basically took themselves away to a um, University of Wales conference centre, which is in kind of mid Wales, which is equally difficult for everybody to get to. And um, once you get there, you're kind of cut off from the rest of the world, really. There's fairly poor internet access. Um, there's no, there's no public, public transport is, is very limited. You can't escape and even kind of go to the pub, really. You've got to stay in there and just get on with it. And I think that, that kind of really intensive, close work really formed some strong bonds within the team as well. And it helped to continue to build that culture of trust 
engagement and a shared kind of commitment to success as well. So make haste slowly. I think in some ways this, this kind of reflects the difficulty of the geography of Wales. So this is a map from the, from the Mabinogion. Um, and the thing about Wales is that it's, it's, it's kind of very difficult to get anywhere, really. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of from Cardiff up to, to kind of Bangor University. You're talking about a good five-hour kind of train journey, really. Um, so you do feel that you're making haste slowly as you're travelling across, across the kind of hinterlands. And um, that is a challenge for collaboration because just the sheer difficulty of actually bringing people together in a room does, does make it quite difficult. And that's another reason why we had to kind of have these um, events where we took ourselves away and actually spent a lot of time together quite intensively because there was less opportunity for that more kind of ad hoc, ongoing sort of physical getting together, really, and physical meeting. So... Um, and what it also reflects, I think, the make haste slowly, is around the, 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 the kind of sheer slog of the procurement process as well. So having pulled together that massive specification, over 600 lines of requirements in there, we then had to go through a very lengthy procurement process, um, which took, I think, the best part of 12 months start to finish. And that was after, you know, after the specification was written. So we went through a, a pre-qualification questionnaire stage, followed by an invitation to tender. We then evaluated the written responses from suppliers. We had on-site supplier demonstrations and reference site visits. So all of the kind of things that you would expect. But again, the challenge of that was magnified again by that geography. And the fact that really the suppliers did need to travel around the whole of Wales. We couldn't simply say, well, everybody's got to come to Cardiff because we would have lost our buy-in again. We, had to, we really had to ensure that our suppliers went to North Wales, they went to Mid Wales, they went to South Wales, and that they made that commitment to engaging with all of the partners equally, really. So again, quite challenging. But then having um, signed the contract, done the legal work, and um, finally signed the contract, at, I think at the very end of December um, in 2014, we then started to move very quickly after that as we moved into, um, into um, implementation. So with his breath in his fists, this kind of image of us kind of then running at our target, really, to try and get there as quickly as we could. So we broke the, um, then the, um, the consortium into three co cohorts. Um, and cohort one had a very rapid onboarding process, really. So I said, as I said, we, we signed the contract in December 2014. Swansea were the first institution to go live, and that was in June 2016, so very tight time scale for them. Um, and then with the National Library of Wales and Aberystwyth Universities following shortly afterwards, it was again, it was quite challenging for the supplier as well, really, I think, to work that quickly with so many institutions and to bring us all on board at, you know, at a level of, of quality, really. So a big achievement, really, there for the cohort one institutions and for Ex Libris as well, I think. And um, what, I guess what we then started to see from that is some, some of the accolades starting to come out, in particular the Times Higher Education Leadership and Management Award, which we won in 2015 for Outstanding Library Team, was a joint wealth entry. Um, and what I've also included here is, is a quote from our, um, one of our Welsh Assembly Ministers, Ken Skates, who at the time was, had libraries in his portfolio, um, really to show the kind of recognition that we started to receive at a national level in Wales as well, really, for the, for the work that we were taking forward. So the strength of a nation is in its knowledge. This is Owen Glyndor, um, probably one of the last true kings of Wales, really. So this is really about drawing on that knowledge, history, expertise, and how doing that gives you strength, really, in terms of, of, in terms of the consortium. Um, so, really, this is about the way that we actively shared experience and knowledge across the consortium. So, we kind of, we kind of bootstrapped, really. So, Cohort 1, having gone live, then shared their expertise with Cohort 2, and then Cohort 1 and Cohort 2 helped Cohort 3. So, it was a very active cascading of that learning process, really. And National Library of Wales provided the Welsh language translations of the interfaces for the others. So again, an opportunity really for us to share expertise across the consortium so that we're not all doing the same thing and effectively reinventing the wheel. 
Um, we, the way that we did that was through lots, lots and lots of activities, workshops, what we call mini-meets, site visits, getting staff out to go and look at what's been done elsewhere, but also virtually as well. So using communication tools very actively to share our experience. So things like Yammer, Skype, lots of video conferencing, Basecamp, which is the Ex Libris tool, all of those really to enable us to share as much of that learning as possible and also to drive innovation, really. And then finally, learning from other consortia as well. So learning about what others have done and again, actively applying that to our initiative. OK, so I think that's, I think that's Welsh football, not rugby. I think it's football. Um, I was wise once when I was born, I cried. So this, I guess, really is the kind of realisation that having done all of that work and having got to the point where all of the institutions are live on the new system, there's still so much work to be done, really. We've, we've really only kind of touched the surface of it. And this is where the real hard work starts, I think. I think procuring a system and getting it live is relatively easy in comparison. So the kind of things we're now thinking and, and looking and actively working on, really, in terms of the next level for our consortium, are around actively using the shared system to share real services across the institutions. So the first thing around that is having a shared um, discovery tool. So in addition to each of us having our own discovery interface, we have a consortial view, which enables our users to search across all of the collections now, across research and HE institutions in Wales. Single catalogue for Wales, something we're working towards, something that potentially would enable us to share catalogue records, so potentially catalogue once, use that record many times. We've talked with Ex Libris extensively about what they call the, the network zone as a potential tool for enabling us to do that. We're also engaging with JISC and with OCLC around the national bibliographic knowledge base developments there as well, so trying to understand the best technical route. And then what else can we share, really? How else can we use the system to enable us to share more things, offer better services to our users? So we're thinking about things like sharing document supply, possibility of reciprocal borrowing. We're working actively on sharing analytics and metrics and reports, things like developing APIs. Um, we've established a process for shared voting on the enhancements process. Um, and then finally, capturing the benefits of what has been achieved so far and what is to come. And I think the real challenge for us there is around attribution. Because if you can, if you can show, for example, that um, the time you, you're spending less money on cataloguing a book than you used to, is that because of the LMS or is it because of something else altogether? And how we kind of tease that out is going to be quite challenging. But we're doing some work with JISC around that to develop a benefits realisation framework, which will enable us to track those and measure those benefits into the future, really. So finally, just to finish, a final proverb, without perseverance, talent is a barren bed, which hopefully sums up our whole experience of, of this initiative. Thank you. Thank you.